you ever had the feeling that your body is sabotaging your career and life ambitions? I'd like to introduce you to Geneva Patterson, a senior faculty member at the Center for Creative Leadership in Brussels, Belgium. In her 2020 Harvard Business Review article, she courageously shared her personal story about how, at age 48, she was convinced that she had early onset Alzheimer's disease. Too afraid and embarrassed to discuss her difficulties with anyone at work, she made excuses for her forgetfulness. She would get lost, even with a GPS, arrive late to important meetings, double and triple book calendar time slots, miss flights, and be unable to recall what someone had said to her just a few minutes earlier. She ended up backing off from a career-enhancing role because of self-doubt about being able to handle more project details. After talking with her doctor, she found out she was in menopause. Geneva wrote about another woman, a 51-year-old tech executive, whom she called Ania, who was also experiencing career derailment during her transition to menopause. For Ania, those years of confusion, self-doubt, and severe anxiety almost ended her career. Her symptoms became so severe that two years of damaging 360-degree feedback and declining performance led to her dismissal. My name is Erica Engel, and I'm the founder and CEO of a gut microbiome company, an MIT graduate, and I earned my PhD in biochemistry at Boston University School of Medicine. Professionally, I've dedicated my life to understanding what it takes to keep one's body in top shape, not just physically fit, but internally fit. So you can imagine my reaction when I started to experience symptoms of perimenopause, the lead up to menopause. I've been in presentations where it just feels like the words don't come as quickly and as clearly as I'd like them to because of a feeling of brain fog. Worse yet, I'm starting to wake up at night when I used to sleep for eight plus hours and my body, it's changing. I can relate to the fear, stress, and self-doubt that Geneva and Ania shared. Will my mind allow me to perform at my best during the next investor call? Will the right words come to me when I'm put on the spot? It's all extremely scary to think about. It turns out that one of the problems of perimenopause and menopause is all about cleavage. No, not that kind of cleavage. Let's talk about what gut microbiome experts call a lack of estrogen cleavage. Basically, estrogen cleavage is the breaking apart of estrogen molecules. Estrogens are created in the body in a complex form. But in order for them to be converted to an active form that is usable by the body, they must be broken apart. Now, where does this critical cleavage happen, you might ask? In the gut microbiome. So what's the gut microbiome? Well, the digestive system includes your mouth, esophagus, stomach, and small and large intestine. Everything from mouth to colon, from entry to exit. The gut microbiome includes all the critters that live there, including bacteria, fungi, viruses, and cells. Your gut microbiome is like the conductor of a masterful orchestra, cueing key players to perform their roles, absorbing food, triggering immune responses, and even orchestrating estrogen activation. You see, the body continues to make estrogen as we go through the four to 10 year transition to menopause. But just because the body makes estrogen doesn't mean that it can use it. The gut microbiome plays a critical role in transforming estrogen to its active form. I'll show you what I mean. So this slide shows a cross-sectional view of the small intestine. Imagine you've taken the small intestine and chopped it down the middle and you're looking at it from the side. First, we have our gut lining cells. This lining is only one cell thick, so it's really easy to damage. Each cell has little finger-like projections called microvilli. The microvilli have little blood vessels in them to help shuttle nutrients into the systemic circulation that plays many roles from building your hair, skin, and nails, to maintaining your immune system, keeping your organs healthy, and giving you energy. Protecting the top of your gut lining cells, you have a very thin layer of mucus called the mucosal barrier. The mucosal barrier plays two roles. First, it helps prevent damage to the gut lining cells. And second, it's the space where the gut microbiome lives. This is where the two types of bacteria needed to activate estrogen are. They're called the firmicutes and bacteroides. So your body produces estrogen. This estrogen travels to the gut microbiome where the firmicutes and bacteroides release enzymes that cleave it. This makes it usable. 
It's absorbed through the microvilli and is shuttled through the systemic circulation to specific binding sites where it can do its work supporting brain health, great skin, stoking metabolism, and more. What happens to estrogen that doesn't get cleaved? Well, it meanders through your body and ultimately gets discarded via urine. It's totally wasted. What's fascinating about this process of cleaving estrogen is that it applies not only to the estrogens that your body creates, it also applies to estrogens that are given via hormone therapy and phytoestrogens consumed in the diet. For example, phytoestrogens that you eat, such as edamame, flaxseed, or tofu, are taken in by the body and end up in the gut. They need to be cleaved by the firmicutes and bacteroides, just like our physiological estrogens. The same situation applies to estrogens given through hormone therapy. They need to be broken down by the gut microbiome in order to be usable. So what can you do to maximize your estrogen cleavage? Find out what your gut microbiome needs to function at its best. Each person is different. What's good for me might not be good for you. You can figure this out by understanding how well your bacteria are breaking down the foods you're eating. This isn't about how much bacteria you have. This is about whether the bacteria are working the way you need them to. You can figure this out by looking at levels of key markers found in the blood. Here are some simple tips to get you started. Number one, keep eating your veggies, but spice it up. Try kimchi on your pork tacos or with eggs. Fermented foods are not only great for your gut, but they also add variety and some adventure to your plate. Fiber and fermented foods from these different veggies feed the firmicutes and bacteroides that cleave estrogen. Number two, start prioritizing 10 minutes of a restorative activity each day. This could be meditation, a walk outside, a massage, or a bubble bath with your favorite rubber ducky. The brain and the gut are connected, and when the mind is stressed, it causes imbalances in the gut, which impacts estrogen cleavage. Number three, stop taking a probiotic that contains fewer than 15 strains of different bacteria. Not all probiotics are helpful. Diversity of strains is key so that you don't add too much of any one strain that can outcompete and kick out the bacteria needed to cleave estrogen. To check the number of strains, just count the number of different bacteria on the ingredients list of your supplement bottle. Don't let your life ambitions get derailed by biology. Thrive during perimenopause and menopause by prioritizing your gut microbiome health. And remember, a healthy gut equals great cleavage.